Get Into Gate. This is episode 105. We're talking Stargate SG-1. And uh, this week, we're talking a uh, special double episode. It's been a little while, boys. Uh, let's get into it. My name's Mitch. Joining me, the full Get Into Gate team, we've got Matty. Yo. We've got Brendan. Hello. And Reese. Yeah, g'day, guys. Reese is our newbie. The rest of us are our long term Stargate fans. Uh, Reese, he's watching each of these episodes uh, for the first time. So he's been on it about two and a half years. And we are halfway through Stargate SG1. Here we are, midway through season five, uh, double episode Summit and Last Stand. We decided last week, look, we're going to bunch these two together because it's a, you know, it's, a, it's pretty much a, It's pretty much part one, part double. two. We didn't have it in season four, and we still hate season four for a little bit because of that so we're going to get back on and uh, make up some ground so uh, how do we want to do the synopsis before we get into it do you want me to read both do you want me to read summits oh let's nah. go one by one one by one mm. yeah, I like see that. what we think okay Summit. A truce has been declared among the Goulds so that the Warlord can attend a summit on the future of universe domination. Since Jackson speaks fluent Gould, he is sent to the summit disguised as an aide, but his real mission is to poison the delegates. Someone who's not a Jafar. Hmm, damn it. That leaves one man. She did say human before. Yeah. Before she mentioned no yeah. Jafar. Yeah. Human, human. They all look at Teal. Yeah. Uh, human. Yeah. Guys, guys, human. I know oh, he he looks like the peak of human physicality. <laughs> Look at it. The emblem will probably give it away. I reckon. <laughs> Just something I, when I read this when I watched the episode, a truce has been declared among the Goulds so that the Warlord can attend a summit. The Warlords, or do they not mention the Warlord in the first half of the sentence? Look. I'll- I'm not happy. Season five mm. has been look. Last week, the Gould Glinders instead yeah. of gliders, Ooh, and no uh, become the targets of a secret hostile takeovers from yep. Prove Ground. See, there's the missing S from Warlords. Ah, see, see there we go. There you see, go. Carry <laughs> it over for <laughs> yeah. two weeks. All right. It all, it all balances all out there. the watch. <laughs> Someone's just said I've missed an S in there. They go, I'll just chuck one in. Yeah. No yeah. problem. No backspacing. Anywhere. You just got to add it in later on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't so even s- look where it was going to go. Summit's written by the team of uh, Joe Malozzi and Paul Mully, directed by Martin Wood. Solid crew there. That's a solid writing, directing team. And then the next week, uh, directed by Martin Wood. Why wouldn't you? It's part yeah, one, obviously. part two. Mm. Robert C. Cooper decides to come and go, I can finish this. I got this, boys. I got oh. it. Uh, you, you, mate. Okay, write whatever little story and details you want. I'll just polish yeah. it up and put it all Take together. Take it okay? Thanks. Last stand and battled and under siege, SG-1 attempts to escape the Gould search and destroy mission bent on finding them and the secret crystal they carry. Meanwhile, the balance of life is threatened by the reappearance of of Anubis, the oldest and most evil system lord uh, there ever was. Thank God we can talk about Anubis now. Oh, I know. Uh, right? <laughs> so it's uh, been so right. annoying. Right at the start of yeah. Summit where like they zoom in and it's like, who yeah. are you talking about? Please goes, say it. Please is say this it. a Pakno? Is that his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of Kevin Durant and they're coming, 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 coming. Anubis. And I'm like, thank God you said it. <laughs> you cut to the credits, man. And I had to bite my tongue in front of Reese for another week. I would cut a mother. <laughs> See, because that was the exact moment my heart broke because I knew Poffers wasn't coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Poffers. You're like, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> and they even, so bad, they and even yeah. tickled your ass with a feather with the A. They're like, ah. Uh, and you're like, I knew yeah. Poffers. Ah, Anubis. Shit. Yeah. I wanted Apophis or. Anus or Anubis was the third yeah. option. A new anus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, so- what did you say, Zabakta? Oh, Anubis. <laughs> what do you think I said? Nothing. Oh. An anus. How them teeth going? <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. Um, you, you go, Reese. Give us your thoughts on the episode, but I want to come back to Zabakna as well. <laughs> Yeah. Away from the teeth. Oh, look, I mean, um, if we're just talking about the first episode, Summit. Um, no, we're not. We're talking great. about both. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> shit Double ending. Yeah. No, Summit, yeah, it was awesome. So much more information, like, they just packed it in. Oh, yeah. Introducing all the system lords, like, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty sweet. Like, I've got probably the most notes I've ever written for, a, for an lines. episode. Of <laughs> six, there's six lines here. Wow. <laughs> but, um, on the phone. <laughs> Reese is paying attention. But three of those lines are just the names of the system lords. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. No, oh. but, yeah, I... Yeah, I really, uh, I really dug it, man. It was, it was cool to see like the, um, the storyline progress, and the the dynamic of it change because all the system lords are getting together and going, yeah, all right, mm. let's do this shit. Um, and then, but when I saw um, Jackson's ex girlfriend, I'm like, oh shit. How the hell did she get in space? <laughs> that was my that was my first thought. 
<laughs> last time, last time we saw her, she just magically yeah. got to Egypt without <laughs> driving. She yeah, used a Glinda. And, and then at the end of the episode, <laughs> she's in a spaceship that takes off and goes to space. Yeah. I don't remember it, to be honest. <laughs> There's an Alcash with a fin on it. Look at that weird fin on the bottom. Yeah. Is that That's weird? right. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 No, well, we're seeing her, and I reckon this is one of the strangest previously ons this show has put together. Because usually, when they put it together, and, you know, you do patch it from a lot of clips from different episodes, mm. but you can see this sort of ongoing story thread. This was just like, remember, remember this, this bit, remember this bit, <laughs> yeah. and this bit's also going to be relevant. This. If you remember what this was from that episode, it, it, it's going to be a thing later because it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was just a, it was a yeah. clip show. In a previously on it was it was strange, but I totally. having watched them all recently, like it yeah. was pretty fresh. Like, in our remember minds. when Tan said, "There's a guy, but you're not allowed to know his name." Mm. That's a big thing. We're going to tell yeah. you his name. Yeah. Just hold your breath. Hold, wait, yeah. And then Sarah, and then the Ritu um, Gene thing. Yeah, and the, and then, the fifth yeah. man. Yeah. Like, yeah, the fifth man. They li- yeah, that was literally compound. just a like a throwaway comment in the episode. Hey, remember, remember the Ritu? Yeah, well, that's what we're doing here. Like, <laughs> you didn't need to show us that in. In like previously on <laughs> re two, what did I say? Real, real, real. Oh, that's not yeah, re yeah, two. Yeah, real. I'm gone. Too that's many re's. Re two were invisible. Yeah. The real with a right. Yeah, real, real was that scary looking pirate yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Technically speaking, yeah. oh, like Johnny Depp's pirate yeah. buddy, <laughs> dead man's. But I mean, we wanted to talk about. Teeth. Well, no, not so much teeth with the partner, but like, <laughs> obviously they don't speak in Flint. Like that, no one can. No, no actor sounds like that, right? Mm. That's all like done in post. But Kevin Durant, when he's you watch that opening scene when he's talking to Sarah or um, Osiris, and he's like his nostrils are flaring. Yes, yeah. incredibly. <laughs> so, and I'm like, are you part. actually trying to do the voice? You know, they said like, like he was having an orgasm while yeah. he's telling her. <laughs> his name is Anubis. <laughs> You are going to love but like, this. <laughs> well, see, we're from like, actors that have been on Star Wars sets, and they say, you know, you get a lightsaber, you're either just holding the hilt or you're holding the hilt with, like, a green, you know, plastic stick on the right. end. Yeah. But you hold, you're on a Star Wars set, you're wearing Jedi robes or Sith robes, you can't help but pick it up like a child and go... Of course. Yeah. Well, you know? Tom Holland said he was always thwipping. Thwipping, yeah, right. So you, the, like, how can you help that? Yeah. So I can just imagine Marty if you're, set, yeah. you're dressed like Zipakna, like you know, like uh, Daniel says later on, it's, mm. it's a gold Mardi Gras, or, uh, or <laughs> yeah. however he described yeah. it, totally. is, is yeah. Kevin Durant sitting there just... He's having to speak a little bit like this, and he's he's, he's flaring flanging his nostrils. His like, yeah, and so flanging his own voice requires his nostrils just to open in and out to like breathe in more it's, oxygen or it something. It takes me back, though, to when he was in Dark Angel and he Played like um, the, dog. the dog boy, yeah, because yeah, yeah. that really helped the way he was able to do that with the prosthetics he was mm. wearing. It kind of made his nose like this separate little entity, like when he was sniffing, like being a dog. <laughs> I fucking love that dude. He's... I thought he was gonna sneeze. I'm yeah. like, how are they gonna film <laughs> this? <laughs> you know, at one stage it reminded me. It was a weird reference. You ever remember the Little Rascals? The kid who played Alfalfa could like met, like wriggle his, 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 his ears. Yeah. That's what I want at the end of the scene where he goes Anubis, and then when he didn't say anything, I wanted his nostrils just go. <laughs> it's just, it's nice like that's his own off. little mic drop, yeah. <laughs> like the, the the dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Yeah, 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 yeah. coming out on the side. <laughs> no, so he looks so much more badass in this episode compared yeah. to like pretense. Like you said, you know, Gould Mardi Gras. It's like, well, his old mm. straw hat was from Gould Mardi Gras. Yeah, mm. and the skirt. He looks so much more badass in this episode until it gets to the point where he goes to sit back on his throne, mm, <laughs> so and awkward. you see. <laughs> You see, he's still wearing a skirt and like knee high, like leather boots. Yeah, they and were, just, just they were look more knee, like pleather. Just, like, his, <laughs> and just his kneecaps exposing. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, if you gave like a woman that, that outfit, she would be so powerful. She'd do the leg cross and show yeah. a bit of leg and all that. She'd have gone all out. Well, you Whereas, saw Sarah later on, the way she was sitting. Every time yeah. she right? presented, I think when she first came in, she was wearing a lot less than later on when she sort of got the legs up and crossed. Yeah. It's like yeah. whatever she was doing, she was using what she was wearing to exert power. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. if, she, if she's wearing a skirt, and thigh high boots that's mm. a power move what yep. she's doing whereas Zapak now he just he kind of just like just sat on the edge of it <laughs> yeah, he didn't know where to look watch it, it again so I think he oh, went to sit down and guy. cross his legs he's like I can't oh, oh no this I can't is so do uncomfortable. this so <laughs> uncomfortable um mm, yep go on I need yep. a cushion yeah <laughs> it's like he's I mean, trying to hide an erection he's just, yeah he's yeah. like um, <laughs> this seat is cold <laughs> and I'm not wearing underwear I knew I made a mistake <laughs> Yeah, poor bastard. Because otherwise, he was he was badass in this episode. Yeah, yeah. bloody um, Lieutenant Elliot makes a little comeback. He's back. Yep. Oh. First mission. Welcome along. Glad he's dead. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's dead. why we were so oh, annoyed like last week that he wasn't part of SG eleven. He's part of SG seventeen. Because mm. this would have been amazing. All of SG seventeen die. So it would have been great to witness yeah. an SG eleven death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again. yeah, totally. <laughs> 
Also, so why good. were they sending SG-17 with them? Because they didn't expect them to die. Yeah. It's true, yeah. They're going to see the toe crusher. They're going to see, yeah, it was a lecture or some shit. Maybe if it was... see watch a toe lecture. Maybe if it was SG-2, everyone would have survived. Not just bloody SG-17. Just random bloody... Useless. And they must be real new. Like when they're walking around the Toker and there, he's like, "Oh yes, this is the uh, the crystals, and this is what our technology's yeah. like." And they're just writing down yeah. notes. I'm like, "What yeah. are you doing?" And then, uh, "Oh Neil, would you like to come along?" He's like, "No, I've got to go and help Teal wait for Daniel." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's according to the commentary, it was else. a bit of a, a last minute addition because originally with the episode, this episode, it wasn't going to be Landhash that had survived. It was going to be Landhash that died. And Martouf oh. had lived. The host had lived. And they were going to bring J.R. Bourne back. Right. And he was going to have his farewell with Carter. And he was actually going to be... He was going to go, like, full-blown evil and, like, be be using that serum. He was going to try and steal that serum to, like, kill all the Jafar and the Tok'ra and the Gold and all that kind of stuff. But the actor himself wasn't available. So that's why they oh, kind yeah. of had to do He's a bit of a rewrite. stuck in an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck. Stuck, all right. Stuck. <laughs> right in the shaft. 2002, stuck. <laughs> oh, this this episode came out in 2002, right? so, mm-hmm. you know, maybe he was stuck. I thought the same thing about Elliot when he came back in. I'm like, oh, he's on his first mission. Oh, this okay, that's cool, yeah. You know, he's fresh off uh, Proving Ground the other week, and then come the second part of this two-parter, and uh, he gets Lantash uh, inside him, and all. hang on. Oh, that's why I feel like I recognise him. That's right. He he takes on the, like the Lantash personality for a little. That that's right. That's what remembering after all. Oh no, he's dead. Okay, no, I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's he made something of an impact. Yeah, after, I forgot like, Lantash was in this totally. Because yeah. I always remember the Daniel bits. Well, the Daniel bits are my favourite. I feel like Carter forgot Lantash was in Martooth this whole time as well because it's like Elliot mm. carrying Lantash is like, oh my god, Carter, I love you so much. Blah blah blah. She doesn't mention Lantash's name once. She was no. in love with Martouf. Yeah, she, she had no. She didn't care for the symbiote at all. No. She was about the host. Yeah. But it's like, and then Martouf's partner was her. Well, what was her her Tokra? Jolinar. Jolinar. What you How forgot you that? that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, trying to erase it from my head. Do that. I want to know what he had. Like, give it to so me. So it's like <laughs> Jolinar and Lantash had nothing to really do with. They just seemed to just like carry the memory. But it's like, well, yeah. Martouf was down with Jolinar's old host. Like, yeah, he three, was. He was full three hosts the bit. before Carter. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if Martouf had rocked up to the planet where Carter got. Um, implanted with Joel and R when she was like giving mouth to mouth to that old guy that was dying on the planet. Yeah. Would the whole thing with Martooth still have happened if he happened to be in that body still? Mm. Like if Joel and I were still Absolutely. in that body? <laughs> oh, like, yeah. yeah. Give I'm me down. that beard rash. I don't, yeah, I don't think they care really, the Tokra. They're yeah. just down and dirty. Like, I don't see race or gender or age yeah. or any of that. I'm yeah. attracted to the Person. But it's like this whole no, thing is, is Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> there's too much. There's too much different. I can't do it. You used to be this young, hot woman that yeah. I was in love with for years, and now you're an old man from a different planet. I can't yeah. do it. Can't do it. Oh, but just, it's so they weird. Used to just be a worm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like if we Anything's go back. Than that. If we go back to almost as bad as Joel and I with Anise and Freya, it's like well, one of them liked Jack and one of them liked Daniel, so they mm. clearly have different preferences. Mm. But this is, leads us to believe that Lantash and Martuf were both on Carter. Yeah. Big but time. then she was an interested in Martouf. So it's like Lantash going, oh, I love you, I love you. She's like, yeah, I had yeah. really complicated feelings for Martouf. And Lantash is like, what the f***? I'm right here giving you like my dying yeah. you know, proclamation. Yeah. And all you can talk about is my old host oh, who died six months ago. I was ago. getting a little bit pissy at Sam because like, the only thing that she never, she never took the relationship with Martouf to the, or even explored what the next level possibly could have been because she was confused about what she felt and what was still left over from Jolna. And now that she can't, further that on because Martouf's dead she's like hearing all this stuff about how he's in love with her and she's like she didn't say the words it was kind of like yeah I was so in love with him as well I'm like no 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 no. you don't get to say that now that he's a worm yeah no Mm. that (laughs) the the thing that irked me the most about the whole Tok'ra thing was when um, Lantash was dying Selmak didn't give a fuck Mm. like they're good mates like when Selmak Mm. was implanted into Jacob Lantash was there helping him and Martouf in Tok'ra part one and two so when yeah when when Lantash is dying, Carter's like, "Come on, Sam, we gotta go." And it's like, wouldn't Sam yeah. wouldn't Sam so be like, "Hey, bro, put that yeah, give me a second to say yeah. goodbye to him." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was something they could have that they missed that could have been pretty great. Mm. Yeah, those two. especially given that yeah that Lantash has been there that whole time in stasis, so they haven't been able to communicate yeah. with him. Yeah. I never put that Jacob's together before. Like, yeah, let's go, Carter. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Cheers for the memories. Maybe yeah, maybe Selmac was into Joel and I. Who knows. 
I was glad they addressed it, the old here. woman with my teeth or whatever. <laughs> with the old dude. Not too long after uh, Selmac revealed, or Selmac slash Jacob revealed, the, the true extent of the plan to, to Jack that, oh, no, by the way, the end of this is we're going to, like, we're going to, we're going to kill them all. We're going to poison them all. And I'm like, okay, when's Tilk find out about this? Because this is really going to affect the <laughs> yeah. Jafar. And then it was like a scene or two later where they're like, oh, we're, yeah, hope, we're kind of hoping we're going to figure out how not to kill the actual Jafar, but just the symbiote. Bef- but look, yeah. that's that's the first step is killing yeah. the symbiote. It's it's Jafar, cool. it's, Jafar are fine. They're fine. But if they're dead, well, it's collateral damage. And I'm like, mm, you, you might <laughs> want to say that to the yeah. big black guy behind you before he kills your ass. <laughs> yeah, and in theory, obviously, apart from the infant good they have inside them, there are more Jafar yeah. than there are Gwauld system lords. Yeah, mm. yeah. Or powerful Gwauld. So, yeah, you, you're making a huge genocide mm. just to kill a small evil. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty loose. But would the Jafar keep fighting even though their god's dead? <sighs> Who knows, mate? They seem to just jump from one to the other, don't they? They all yeah. started following... following Apophis, when um, yeah. he took over Sokar's army, so they were just like, okay, we'll just follow whoever. <laughs> Great, now we need a new god. <laughs> no, not again. Need a new tattoo. <laughs> oh, speaking of, okay, so in the, the summit, one of the um, system lords, um, Olakun, um, he had like the headband with this like sort of little, I don't know, like black star guy. pattern on it. Was he the black guy or the white guy? He was the, the black, black guy. guy. He was the black guy, yeah. Olakun. Yeah. Should have led with that. <laughs> Well, was it wasn't about that. It was about the fact that he <laughs> he has his own like symbol logo thing, but yeah. then on the top of his head he had like this weird like you know wonky star. Mm. But then that was also the the symbol of Zapakna's first prime. How he had like this gold, and it looked identical. Mm. And oh. I was like, are they just recycling symbols now? What about like, the, the well, same didn't episode? he say there was a Hatak that got taken over, and half of his Jafar were fighting for Anubis? Oh, that could be it. Just filling in. Was that Cooper's writing or? <laughs> Where's the line in my notes? Yeah. Actually, you're going to love. Um, so for the audio commentaries, so for Summit, it was Martin with Joe and Paul. No, I think it was just Martin with Joe and then James Titchener. Yeah. But then for Last Stand, they kick out Joe and Robert Cooper comes in. Oh, God. So, and just play this one for me, Mitch. So this is right <laughs> right at the start, like right after the lion roars and wait. they introduce in the themselves. Yeah. yeah, in Last yeah. Stand, this is the first thing you hear. Previously on Stargate SG-1. Hi, I'm Martin Wood, the director. I'm Robert Cooper, uh, the writer of this episode and one of the executive producers of the show. And I'm James Titch, the visual effects producer. Really? Just had to drop the executive producer yeah. thing in there? What else do I do? I'm a single dad. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a partner. Um, she want a rich guy. <laughs> I play a 32 uh, handicap in golf. Um, I wear uh, shorts and sandals. Um, yeah, socks and sandals. Socks. Big time. Well. well, and then have a... <laughs> he totally would. <laughs> and, then, and that's on Sundays. That's his office car. Well, and have a listen to this bit. So this is a bit of a two-parter bit. So it's uh, initially he's talking about... We we, talk, we spoke about with Reese a few weeks ago with Between Two Fires, how we're talking about how they're starting to kill off like all our allies. They're taking away all our allies. Mm. So this is Robert Cooper explaining why they're doing that. But then just listen to a little part in the middle of it as well where he totally, I feel like he really passive-aggressively just disses Brad Wright. Now, um, this is the conclusion of, of uh, a two-parter that, that uh, follows on the heels of destroying the Tolan, ruining the tow career in this one. Well, the truth is, um, when we were developing a lot of these stories, we weren't entirely sure the series would be coming back for... Uh, sixth season and so one of the things we wanted to do was wrap up a lot of stories that could hopefully dovetail into a concept for a feature film that uh, Bo- Brad Wright uh, one of the other executive producers and co-creator of the show uh, and I had uh, to, to sort of follow the series and so by having a sixth season we then sort of have all these episodes sort of in, in, in the middle of fifth season that seem to be coming to a head or leading to something and then we kind of had to pull back and say whoa uh, we still need some friends wow, we still need six. some some stuff to go yeah but you know this is sci-fi so <laughs> one of the one oh of the God. other one oh, one of the other ones that's just yeah, what, he's like, that's he's what like we like to let him believe he's not really though just, he's projecting I'm really the and only talking one. interesting and he's yeah. like oh yeah and Brad right he's one of the other uh, he's one of the other uh, like me he's an executive but anyway producer. about me <laughs> one of the other executive producers and creator Andrew of the show <laughs> yeah <laughs> like Dick. yeah put that last <laughs> uh, 
Okay, that's interesting because at what stage did they find out they were, were coming back for a sixth season? Very, very late because this is the last season on Showtime as well. Mm. Like if Showtime didn't renew them, they actually then now went over, as of season six, they go over to Sci-Fi. So another, mm. another channel actually had to pick the show up. Mm. And I think run with it. I just, Showtime was like, no, we're done. Yeah, because I just had a couple of thoughts even just listening to that when he said that we were trying to wrap up storylines. I'm like, okay, cool. So you're writing all the good coming together. Potentially you're going to kill them off. Now you've got Anubis who's coming back to like, whether you kill them off or not, he's going to be like the overlord. That's the, the last stand, especially setting him up to be this big bad that existed years ago, that even the good, he was too extreme for them. So... Is this being episode sixteen? Is this the last six episodes of your series? But then he said, "Oh, we're now we're looking towards a feature film movie that would probably wrap up the series." Mm. So, is are they sort of killing everyone off so that Anubis can be the big bad of the new movie? Like so that's it. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just interested in the way that this show has come together because then you watch it for you know seven, eight, ten seasons. It feels like this was just a natural next step for them yeah. once you know that mm. the show goes on for that long, but. Well, yeah, basically it was, um, that's why the next few season finales, like six, seven, and kind of eight, sort of the two just before eight, are so good is Mm. because each time they think the show is finishing. So uh, the end of season seven with Lost City one and two, that was originally the movie. Mm. So if you think about it, the end of this season could probably quite easily go into a slightly altered version of of Lost City. You know, with Anubis being the big bad and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, it'd be interesting to bring that with Reese when he has finally seen those yeah, two episodes yeah, ago. Right. They could have wrapped up what we've just seen after all this time between mm. now and then. Season eight was a bit of a stretch. Season yeah. eight, I think, was a bit of a stretch because they sort of came back again and like, oh shit, we're back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really had to backpedal on some stuff. But them starting to like really set him up as this big bad. I- I'm starting to ask questions in the like the whole mythology of the show, like. For one, like Selmak saying, well, he hasn't waited a thousand years just to come mm-hmm. back and get the seat on the table. Like, what's he doing? And for me, I'm like, well, okay, yeah, they weren't thinking about this when the movie was written or in season one. But mythology wise, if you're thinking about this when you're bringing up a character that has been in hiding for a thousand years, presumed dead, why has he waited until now? At this point, maybe they enter this next week. I don't know. I can't remember. But the idea that Anubis saw Ra, who was this overlord of the Gould, he was killed off six, seven years ago or whatever. Why didn't he come back then? Yeah. Why did he wait for the fourth time that Apophis was killed? You know, why the first time he got, no, 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 he'll be back. I'll wait until he comes back. I'll wait for the threequel of Apophis' deaths. And then he comes back for the, like, you know, anticlimactic death and go, right, now's the time to strike. Mm. Um, send out Sapakna to, like, spread the word and get Sarah. Like, I actually forgot that they were even going as far as what they did in this episode. I just thought that they were going to mention him at the start. And then with the Gould all fighting each other in that meeting, I'm like, this is brilliant by Anubis. He is, he's not even here and he's having an impact because these motherfuckers are going to kill each other yeah. <laughs> and just pave the way for his own. Like, he hasn't done a thing. He's not lifted a finger except said about this meeting. Like, it's, I really like what they've done without really doing anything just yeah. yet. When you've got to set up a big bag, because still, like Reese said, he loves Apophis. I still love Apophis. We're four and a half seasons into this show, and I'm like, you're never going to get better than Apophis. You've got to sell me yeah. on mm. this new guy yeah. about why he's Especially so when Sokar was such a letdown. The way oh, they, shit, built, yeah. they built Sokar up to this yeah. big thing, and mm. then he was kind of nothing. To yeah. the point where in my rewatch, after having not seen it for 15 years in some episodes, I'm like, who? Who is this guy? <laughs> is he a thing? Is he a one episode? Oh, hang on. He's a six episode, and he still had no impact. Mm. So the big, the big plan, obviously, was get that bloody gas bomb in kill them all, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, Jackson, oh, I can't do it. My ex-girlfriend's here. Oh, I knew you'd have an issue with that. Like, come on. <laughs> like, the whole plan, if you, if you, Carter says to him, if you're not, or Jacob says to him, if you're not 100% in this mission, you need to tell me. Mm. Still mm. goes in. Like, it should be another reason why you want to kill all the people on board. Your ex misses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he likes her. He likes her. Yeah, come who on, wouldn't? Dude. Here's, yeah. here's what I found was interesting. When Sarah first walked into the big summit, mm. how did they know who she was? Osir- mm. Osiris has been in a canopic jar on Earth in prison for the last thousand, couple of thousand years. Oh, didn't mm. she say I'm Osiris? No. no. Did she say that to Zapakna? She no, said it at one point. Zapakna knew, like at the start, when she come in and he's like, yeah. How would you like to yeah, work for he summoned blah, her. blah, blah, blah? But the, yeah, they summoned yeah. her. Yeah, but for, yeah, for me, that meeting, like, 
the first time Osiris was mentioned was someone else saying it to her. It was yeah. between her first meeting and the second, but oh, again, yeah. when she it was first like a, it was a shows up... It was like, Osiris, what are you doing here? You're the system lord or something. Yeah. yeah. I see you did there. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of audio for you. <laughs> well, the, um, when she I walked thought, in... well, is it Baal's assistant? The guy in the black singlet mm. that announced everybody? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that was all the official announcement. And yeah. then... She just crashed the party, didn't she? Oh, okay. Yeah. She walked in, and then I think it was Baal who said, oh, Daniel Jackson's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I thought yeah, but it was it was that moment he did, though. <laughs> when, I, when I was like, oh, the, Anubis, is the, he plays no part in this meeting. He's just done this, so that they'll all start fighting each other. And then, bang, she's just sort of, like, rocked up. And, yeah, um, it was. Yeah, uh, Baal's assistant was like, the final guest has arrived. And you're like, oh, shit, who's this going to be? Mm. And even though we saw it at the start, I'm like, oh! <gasps> Sarah, what's yeah. she doing here? How'd she get here? <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Like when, if she can, if she can get a weapon in there, like obviously there's some yeah. underhanded shit going on. Why wouldn't Anubis just go and destroy that ship while mm. they're all on there? Don't know. You know, if he's going around, it's impenetrable. They said that at the start. But she got a knife <laughs> through there, so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel got his bio weapon in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. It's not yeah. made of metal, mate. It's the metal yeah. detector. Yeah. <laughs> Did I, his, his ring would have been, though, wouldn't he? His, yeah. little, his little prick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made of metal. Speak, speaking of, I um, just because Brennan likes to uh, bring it into the conversation a lot, I did I did make this for him. I can get you into U.S. quarters. Your job is to get close enough to use this. All you have to do is prick him once. The effect will be in just a little prick. It's a flu shot. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that little mini me. Mini me. I thought it was going to be at the start when he goes, um, "You will be going to the summit," and then Sam Carter's like, "What do you mean?" Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I got that as well. I mean, Lord, you got ya. <laughs> so, how are you going to get me in? You will be among the system lords attending the meeting. I thought you said he was going in as a slave. <laughs> the system lord, you. Little joke there. Little joke there. Funny. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> i got to say, Jack was on fire this episode. He mm. was. He just, had some good gear. He, he just showed his true disdain for the Tokra by just taking nothing seriously. Yeah. Well, and then there's that point where after they... <laughs> so good. After they have their meeting where, like, the two sort of stories split into, you know, yeah. the two bits, and he does that little walk and talk with Jacob. It's oh, like you have, to, you have to notice really closely that it's like Jacob walks out mm. and, and then he chases him and two Tokra walk in as Jack's walking out and he literally like pushes yeah. one out yeah, of the yeah, way yeah. Extra. to get out. <laughs> That's so good. And I they... really hope the extra didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and then there's the walk and talk keeps going and at one point, you know, um, Jacob turns and starts walking to camera and Jack starts walking yeah, away and he's like, yeah. oh, okay, we're going this way now. Yeah. Like that's his, that's stuff his like disdain that. for the token. Yeah, he's yeah. not even listening to a friend of his <laughs> yeah. who's now a token. And there was another one where they're trying to find the right crystal to go to the surface and um, Tilk and O'Neill are looking at each other and O'Neill's just like, I don't know, man. The diamond like, one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that looks like, mm-hmm. It's up to you. I don't know which one you. <laughs> There's a crack up. So the, the whole, the spy is a human. Did, did I miss even a crucial like line, like small, small, like two word line, and that it would have explained it to me? Because for me, it's like, yeah, the system lords they have human slaves. Part of that, the benefit is they've got a backup host, like with them at all times. Mm. Yeah. But did it have to be a human? Other than like, well, then it paves the way for Daniel because he's the only human in SG One that's fluent in Gould to then get there and bitch out on the plan of killing them because Sarah was there because yeah. they were just like, <laughs> oh, it has to be human. It's like. Well, are you going to tell them your Tokra? Like, how do they not know that, you know... Um, oh, they'll be able to sense it, Mitch. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, depending on who wrote cool. the episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, there's there's <laughs> inconsistencies in the in the history of it. I don't know. I just, I'm like, he had to bitch out on the plan. And it was good. Like, the good him thinking, like, strategically, which is not his job in the team to be that military plan or anything like that, yeah. that he, on the fly, said, we can't do this because if we do it, this is exactly what this mysterious Anubis will want. Yeah. So we have to Which, change the plan. He's, I'm not, he, he didn't even ask Selmak. He goes, Ch- we're changing the plan right now. Mm. Yeah. Which and I, I love that. I yeah. loved it because it pissed me off when he goes, I'm not going to do it because my ex-girlfriend, I'm like, well, that's just tough shit. Mm. Unlucky. You have to do it. But then when he's like, oh, if we, if we don't kill all the system lords, then there's going to be one almighty powerful one. 
And that sort of sold it to me. I was yeah. like, ah, oh, fair enough. You can't do that. Yeah, he did manage to like talk his way around it and be yeah. like, well, Jacob, you didn't know that Anubis was going to rock up and he was going to be the new big bad. Yeah. So it's like, well, and he really did massage Jacob into like, come on, buddy. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you can't do anything else. You know you want to. I think the most annoying thing to me was like Daniel talking to that to Baal's human slave saying, well, you know they're not really gods. Yeah. Right? And I was like, it's, yeah. why would you even say that yeah. especially the precursor to that when he was telling lord you oh your predecessor you know told the other guy in conversation and to his credit he fucking died so like why would he then knowing that why would he bother doing that as well what was he going to get out of it mm. yeah like was he trying to start a, re- a rebellion of the helpers like <laughs> i thought he was just looking for an <laughs> ally i thought he was just like oh shit if i'm going to pull this plan off i need someone i can't be in two places at once i need someone Mm. I need someone to prep the ship while I'm getting Sarah. And so I think he was trying to put his feelers out to see if there are any, anyone sort of <laughs> so risky sympath- sympathetic. Yes. You yeah. right in the middle. So when you yeah. watch those stories, well, that's like, his downfall too, because the guy dobbed him in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you think about uh, that Operation Valkyrie, where you know the Nazi like hierarchy like went, Hitler's a crazy prick. Mm. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're gonna kill this mother. <laughs> How do you start that in the middle of the Third Reich? Yeah. <laughs> and you that yeah. one guy that goes, do you like Hitler? Nah, f- me neither. Thank God for that. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have killed me by now. I'd be in those gas chambers so quick. Like, well, ha- who was the first brave soul to make yeah. that? Yeah. And I mean, if it weren't for you showing up, I mean, Daniel would have pulled that whole thing off single-handedly with the one line that I thought was, would have been the thing that pissed Brennan off the most. How are you going to fly that ship? Well, I've flown a mothership. <laughs> yeah. Park in the street. Uh, yeah. He's a pilot now, man. He can Tube's fly anything he wants. He's <laughs> yeah. flown a mothership. He can fly a cargo ship now. How hard can it be? When did he fly a mothership? Remember when um, Brennan was losing his shit in, um, was it Enemies? Enemies or Ex- Exodus? Double Jeopardy. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the next yeah. one after that. Yeah. yeah. The, the sun blowing up, yeah. Yeah. When he was like, what the hell is Daniel doing left <laughs> on the, in the Peltac on his own? He can't fly it. Yeah, especially because Tilt can't. They... Remedy that quickly, though. Mm-hmm. Well, now he can, you know. He takes his glasses off, gets the guns out. He can do anything oh, yeah. he wants. He's going to put these uh, fake contacts in. And, <laughs> oh, instantly, so much more Action buff. hero. <laughs> um, look, we, we touched on this a few weeks ago, the, the old chicken and the egg thing between an earth deity and the, the ghoul that either inspired it or was inspired because of it. This episode, the first half especially, but the whole idea of the summit kind of brought that back for me with the idea that like you look at the costumes and then the religions that inspired them like you obviously from you know me who? <laughs> you, you, literally, me. you literally gestured like this to you're me right. you're, you're right, right. You're right. You. <laughs> thought about the room thought Not about you, the context yeah. Not you. It, you know he's he's from you know he, the, the Asian heritage then you've got you know all these other figures there yeah that, there was Kali from um, the Hindu belief yes and there was Morrigan mm. from like Celtic mm. you know kind yeah. of it. I think Baal's seeming like Celtic slash something else as well in Just that kind of excellent South African accent. Oh, oh yes, accent. so he was good. So pissed off that he had to park his hot talk in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> this car park is not for hot talks. <laughs> For cars. A bit of kiwi on the end there. <laughs> He's South African, Jafar, but he gets a kiwi flange. Yeah. Jafar, 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 and it was like, well, Ra goes down. Does Ra, the, the god, land in ancient Egypt and find that young boy? And, You're and... obsessed with this young boy. Easy. <laughs> Whoa. Easy. Whoa. Easy, I was Whoa. holding him, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but, and does he go, I'm Ra, and then when he establishes himself as this god, he's this, he's this human with glowing eyes and got you know wonderful technology. Do people start praising him? Oh, Ra, Ra's our god. They start mm. drawing pictures, and then all these other mob you know, show up. You know, Does he spread the word? Or does he sort of take over this human host, walk into a pyramid somewhere and go, or, you know, into a cave or whatever, he sees these drawings and go, oh, I'm going to say on this bloke. It's like, which came first? And for me, mm. like, whether it's the first time I've watched it, rewatches or whatever, my sort of general feeling about Stargate is that that was Ra. He goes down and he establishes himself as his god. They start writing down and drawing pictures of him and stuff like that. But it's, so it's all... 
Egyptian sort of, I don't know, but then you got yeah. all these other gods that yeah, just happen to be... Oh. It's the technology that I have the issue with. I don't have an issue with, with like you were saying, the chicken or the egg. The issue I have is that when you've got a girl would like Kali, you know, the was she, not the destroyer, she's... Um, anyway, yeah, she's, the destroyer. A, she's a Buddhist... Uh, oh, she's the destroyer? Mm. Yeah. Um, so she's this, um, you know, Indian god, you know, right. Hindu. Yeah. But then when she leaves this place, she's going to fly around in a pyramid with Egyptian hieroglyphics yeah. all around it. That's, yeah, that's the weird sort of budding of things that I have is... Oh, mate, there's pyramids all over the world. Are there any in India? I know there's like ziggurats in like South, South America and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, Japan, like they've found underwater ones in Japan and mm. um, in bloody Brazil... Uh, I'm sure they'll be elsewhere. Oh, look, yeah. Yeah, but do they have Egyptian hieroglyphics in it? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) And look, you know, I'm right smack bang in the middle of some Matthew Riley books and just the whole pyramids and conspiracies and stuff. I am right into that right now. (laughs) There's only one Hatak dealership in in all of the system. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Yeah, that guy's loaded. (laughs) (laughs) Like this Weasley. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't change my model. Yeah, the design is mint. Greasy hair. Poppers had to build his big one from scratch. Yeah. So, yeah, you went out of favour with the. Uh, <laughs> Which model is this? Is is this the panic. model where the the doors open or lock with a zat shot? Oh, this is the one with a lock. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, it's better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My other one opened. Yeah. I'd rather them lock. When I when I park the Hatak, I want to just zat it once. Yeah. <laughs> now, brilliant. brilliant. Just on Ball's accent and his pronunciation, there was one thing that absolutely annoyed the crap out of me, and I couldn't get over it. We are all suffering at the hands of this unknown adversary. Adversary? Adversary. It's adversary, right? Yes. Like he's saying it like we it's say things adversity. Oh, tomato, tomato. <laughs> I don't know. Just for, I don't adversary. know why. For some reason it bugged me. Eh? I was like, oh. Adversary. And given the fact that... I'd probably say adversary. And adversary, yeah. I, yeah. Well, well, and given that like two minutes later, Daniel says this. It's time to release the poison. Yeah, we may want to hold off a while. Apparently we're expecting someone else. Who? I don't know. It seems I've got some mysterious new adversary that's been causing some pretty serious headaches. Adversary. Yeah. I think it's just the accent, the different accents, I imagine. Yeah, that's all I can chalk it up to is is the South African. Because, yeah, yeah, it sounds more like he's saying adversity rather than adversary. Mm. Mm. But I guess it's that whole also, like, advertisement versus advertisement. Because yeah. advertisement both are, exci- both are that. acceptable, but advertisement Decor, drives me. Decor, decor. Yeah. Nuts. <laughs> no, mate. Did you, see that, did you see that advertisement? No. No, I didn't. I saw something advertised, Please. but I saw the advertisement. Uh, yeah. Shut your mouth. Yeah. F- ads, we call them. Yeah. Now, did I they... thought you were going to be pissed off at um, Baal's human for calling him Baal. Yeah, what the hell? Did he call him Baal yes. at one point? Baal yeah. called him Jaffa, too. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's what I was wow. going to say about the different pronunciations, is that, like, <laughs> Teal, when Teal says it, yeah, well, he would know. He's sort of like yeah. my Bible, according to how to say those words, yeah. is Jafar. Like when he but said, then he gets to Tonga. Rah. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, oh, says, hey, he pronounces yeah. the yeah. apostrophe yeah. like a prophet. He does it the best. Rah. Tuk rah. Many Jaffa. It's like, no, you, what? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jafar, mate. Yeah, he called him Bao, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. I've been in the yeah, service of my. Yeah, yeah. So I've been in the service <laughs> of my Lord for years, like yeah. decades, and he goes, Bao. And I'm like, hang on. Has he ever heard you call him that, though? Well, it was like six weeks in, and Baal just felt bad telling him when it's not his name. Maybe um, it's got two A's. Maybe I've left for too, for too long. <laughs> can't, can't do it anymore. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> Maybe um, <laughs> it's embarrassing. It'd be awkward if I tell him now. You must not tell him my name. <laughs> Maybe his copy of the script didn't have the apostrophe, so it was just B-A-A-L. Yeah, there was yeah. no apostrophe. Because apparently they're saying in the order commentary, um, you was almost... Who? <laughs> you. <laughs> Lord Yuang Shang It. Because when it. they were typing out the script, like Microsoft Word changed yeah. the T, T-I, to It. Like it uh, auto-corrected. Okay. So when all the scripts were printed out, it was Yuang Shang It. Wow. Yeah, well, so he was Yuang Shang See, it. I had the subtitles on and the subtitles didn't have an apostrophe. It was B-A-A-L. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's, yeah. yeah. I didn't know there was an apostrophe. Yeah, yeah it's normally well. done B-A apostrophe A-L. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just love the, I love the idea that of, of the actor who played his his slave, who saw it as B-A-A-L, um, to say Baal. And he went, oh, it's clearly a typo. It's Baal. It's Baal. Baal. No. <laughs> Ask somebody. <laughs> right? Ask Cooper if you have to. There's a You've script got one supervisor line, sitting <laughs> yeah. on the set. Yeah. <laughs> he'd probably yeah. what he did he's like I'm going to go ask someone about this this could be a mistake this could be real and he goes over and he sees Robert so he's like 
Oh, he probably doesn't That's know. Fine. <laughs> yeah. I'll, just, yeah. I'll roll with what I think. I'm only in it for one episode. He yeah. asked RDA, and RDA's like, no, that's right. Okay. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Gets fired, walked off set. RDA's just sitting there eating a muffin and a craft going, <laughs> Don't ask me, kid. Yeah. Uh, I'm just a producer. <laughs> Your name's above the title. What? Can't hear you. Can't hear you over my fame. So <laughs> is, is Robert C. Cooper surely isn't above RDA now. Like, if he's executive producer... Or co-executive producer. Um, if I you ask s- him, he'll say yes. <laughs> yeah, of course I am. <laughs> Look at my socks. Uh, I think well, I'm um, an executive producer and writer. RDA is clean. an executive producer as well, isn't he? Yeah. I don't know if he's so I guess on executive that, or if he's just On that level, or... I guess they'd be equal, but then it's like, well, RDA's like, name goes above the titles. Yeah. On the, in well, the you, know credits, that, you know for so... sure that he's put money towards it, so has Cooper saved all his writing cash. Yeah, what did he buy in Put for? Put all his fifth race money in. Well, no, apparently, <laughs> apparently I read. <laughs> oh, that's some good money. Yeah, that's some good money. <laughs> no, apparently, apparently I read somewhere that that's basically just a natural progression with TV shows. So it's like you, yeah, you okay. start out as a writer, or even just you know, or whatever. So it's like, it's like if you if you stay on firm. if you mm. stay on for each additional season, yeah. your rank goes up by one. You get promoted. So it's like that. Right. So he at one point he would have been like a co-producer, then a producer, then a co-executive producer. Right. Because no, no one producer does him. right. It puts <laughs> no one <laughs> right, just puts... even after the fifth commandment, it was like eh. yeah. No, but like they people. they put in some dough for it. They put in some cash to like you'd imagine so. Yeah. Find the yeah. Money. Well, obviously, like. RDA and Michael Greenberg would have because they like Gecko is their production company, so yeah. they you know and they were there from the start. But yeah, I don't know about um, Robert Cooper whether he would have put any money into it or not. Or mm. surely, yeah. I mean, these they are IOUs for the ages. Buy, <laughs> yeah. These are I'll, as good as money. I'll work for free for these two are seasons. IOU scripts, buy. They're better than money. <laughs> when I write the fifth race, you'll cash me back. It'll be fine. Here's the thing that really <laughs> hurts: even. is by season eight, I think it's the end of season eight. Brad Wright steps down as like the head honcho showrunner. So it's like when the show fades to black, instead of saying Brad Wright's name, it says Robert C. Cooper's name. And it, and it breaks my it breaks my heart every time I see it. It's so just like Yeah, I've got to be quick with that remote to press stop. Right, yeah, just skip <laughs> skip to the next one because I'm like, oh. Ooh, you almost got me there, Robert. <laughs> um so system lords eat symbiotes, apparently. Yeah, yeah. according to Robert C. Cooper. The hell was that? Because they're like, oh, Daniel's we need like, to... Hey, Selmak, I'll tell you about it. Yeah, wait till we get there. Yeah. It's like, you got six hours. You could have at least told him. <laughs> yeah, yeah we got that question we raised the last episode. I think I have the answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what? Like, how is... <laughs> like, Silent. there's only... Because that was creepy seven shit. system lords. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, surely... Like, when we saw that vat of, of symbios, there was, what, 50 in there? Earlier in season no, one? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, in season, season one. one. When yeah. Daniel shot him up, I'm like, if, there, if there's seven and seven system lords and they're just eating one every night, then surely that's not going to wipe out the population or... No. Yeah, right? It's not yeah. like they meet every day. Yeah. and that's, yeah. Like, how many babies did Hathor have in one sitting? Right. Yeah. She's creaming she a big shrimp tub like that. <laughs> I mean, she hadn't had sex in however many yeah. thousand years, I guess. Actually, I kind of want to see that now, like, just like a shrimp cocktail of all those tiny little primp <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that they... You know, just, they in just, a, just in a martini glass. Two go old, one you cup. Know. I'll have one. I'll have one, please. Yes. They pulled them out of that little vat, <laughs> and then just... Argh, I just want to see, like, you know, even Baal, and just, like... Starts grilling it up. <laughs> Why don't yeah. you get raw? I'm having a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Uh, Just to yeah, make it- apparently it came from like online and stuff like that. A lot of the fans were saying like, well, there's these giant armies of Jafar that all have Primtar in their pouches, mm. yet there's not that many like ruling Gua'uld. So where, mm. where mm, do yeah. they all go? And this apparently was Robert C. Cooper's best way to come up we with the idea of, of of how the the Goa'uld population isn't isn't growing. Uh, mm. Yeah, I don't buy that. So, like it's yeah. so it's, what's, it's a ceremonial thing. Yeah, so basically, like but they for what they're not sacrificing to their god. Like, what are they? Well, no, so that they don't have anyone to challenge them. So it's like they'll they'll let the the primtars grow because they need primtars to go into the Jafar. So they've got strong armies. Mm. But then when those primtar get to full maturity. Give it here. They go into that vat so that they can eat them to, so that they don't have any more adversaries. (laughs) Um, Right. So what about Zapakna? 
Yeah, right? Look at that those chompers, mate. He yeah. has heaps. <laughs> and then... <laughs> that's for about 10 a day. Oh, him and my tooth. <laughs> Jesus. That's why the toker are nearly dead. <laughs> What if, then, what if we? What if that's how it did turn out? That we get Jr. J. Born, is it? Is yeah, come back. He does go dark side, and he was the first one to chop down. Yeah. on a symbiote. You're like, there you go, teeth. There you go. go. It's the whole point. Yeah, I, I do. Brothers. I do find it a little Chomping bit of a. Brothers. Isn't it like a wrestle team? There's that, bur- <laughs> there's that burger joint down the road chomp. called Chompers. <laughs> Team jump. And that picture of them in Supernatural. Gary, you're my way. We're just driving a attack through space. <laughs> chopping you. It's just their thing. Smiling. Yeah. Uh... Just big silly teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it def- definitely doesn't make sense. Like If you go back to the end of last season with Double Jeopardy, Cronus had that, remember the female scientist girl with the like the, the blonde bob, yeah. remember, that got blown up. And then, you know, then we obviously had Chlorel for the first couple of seasons. And then later on, we, we see some of Anubis's, like, we see Toth and, and a few of the other, um, like, yeah, secondary ghouls. Classic Toth. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody Toth head. So, yeah, to me, it, like, it doesn't make sense that they're... Mm. And you're right, I've never really thought about it too much. You just hear the good, you know, oh, bad guys, look at all their armies. But you're right, yeah, they're, they're growing mm. baby symbiotes in their, yeah. in their bellies. And, and then it's one guy. Like you know, like your yeah. system lords or whatever. So you got an army of thousands yeah. of Jafar. So when he says Selmak, that their the population growth isn't happening. They, they they usually spread like wildfire, but it's 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 stopped. They're not growing. Well, what? Yeah, what used to happen then? If this if this is all because the last couple of seasons or how how long is he even talking about? Like their population growth has stopped. When the, yeah. over the last couple yeah. of weeks, last couple of years, yeah. since Ra, since SG one started. After we first knew, knew about them, obviously, because yeah. this is how things <laughs> yeah. have always been for us. So okay, let's even just say it's it's since Ra or whatever last six seven years or something. What was what, what was the process what was before the ceremony, then? Yeah, yeah. What, what are they mm. used to do? Like, where did all these gould go? And because there's way less system lords now, they shouldn't be eating right. as yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> well, and how and, is how is seven a night get a over three nights going to make a dent in an army of thousands? Yeah, of far? yeah. And that stupid friggin' vat was so poorly designed. Where was the handle on the lid? Like yeah. at one point, you see when Daniel goes to open it, he almost loses the lid. It's like put a fucking handle on it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's only one way to uh, to. Um, Explain this away. Absolutely. Cooper! Bloody Classic Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I share Jack's disdain of the Tokra because they are shit. Oh, yeah. They are so shit. They're a shit race. Elliot, <laughs> Elliot goes, oh, I'm looking forward to it. And Jack's like, yeah, yeah you'll get over you'll it. Get over <laughs> it. All right, we all you, did. Give you some examples here I wrote down. During the bombing, when, when the Alcash are coming, just doing carpet bombing anywhere, they're like, let's spread out the tunnels. So like, don't you have tunnels that go deeper? Yeah. Because the deeper you go, surely the won't surface matter. won't matter. Mm. Mm. Secondly, when those El Kesh were bombing again, there was huge cave-ins. At least four Toker had dived into and under a collapsing tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? Freedom! Because <laughs> <laughs> one dude that walks past SG-1 has his hands up and dives like <laughs> under the logs falling on top of him. <laughs> Recut. Come I'm on. a victim of Cooper's riding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got another one. Got another one. Um, What's my kill well, count? They, and they did kill off like two, you know, recurring uh, uh, Toker in this. Yeah, they got off Renal, who we first saw back in like Exodus, and then Alduin, who was the guy, who was he was the fun one that till remember he locked him in the back of the cargo <laughs> ship. <laughs> All right, yeah, that was yeah. that guy killed them both. I was like, bloody yeah, hell, well, that, dude. That'd be the worst way to die. Robert C. Cooper writes you out. Yeah. Well, if you think there about was it, four Toker that got killed by Jafar, and they're the worst shot <laughs> yeah. in the yeah. whole galaxy. Or oh, they jumped into the line of fire. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, totally did. you've got <laughs> totally did. You've got Tilk, you've got Jack, and you've got Ald- Aldwin all running along the grass there, and a yeah. blast goes from behind them. They're all yeah. in line. He slips down <laughs> a muddy all ditch. Get... <laughs> Snapped his neck. <laughs> yeah, they all get thrown forward. Got him. No, no, no. And Aldwin, who is arguably the most powerful and the strongest of the <laughs> yeah, three of them, right? is the one who falls uh, in his face yeah. and dies. I, don't, I reckon <laughs> down a slide. I don't reckon he died. I don't reckon he died. I reckon Tilk was just sick of him. He just feels his neck and says to him, yeah, he's dead. Let's go. He's totally dead. <laughs> he's just knocked out. Tilk, Tilk actually ankle tapped him. That's the part you don't yeah. yeah. He just ankle tapped him and smacked him in the back of the head with his staff. Yeah. I do like that the Toker or even Gould really are, um, are kind of like the Terminators and when they die, like, you know, when a Terminator dies, like their eyes just yeah. you see inside. Mm. Gould, no matter what's going on in their day or what they've been going through, their, their eyes will... Yeah. Just that one last just blast to, of yeah, their eyes. Just so like, you know. Just so you know. 
That's what it's, Reese wanted with with uh, Apophis. That's just the one thing he wanted. Yeah. Just yeah. that, just that final eye glow. I wanted, I wanted, yeah. I mean, Til- Christ. Tilk and Apophis yeah. face off, mad battle, like to the death. Mm. Yeah, like um, and Tilk's been denied that twice now too, because he was supposed to get with Tanith as well. Yeah, yeah. but they just they would have been sick with Apophis just to have no tech and just those two just hand to hand combat. Because mm. like you'd imagine. And the irony... The ghoul to be strong. The irony is they do that, remember, in season 10. There's an episode in season 10, right right oh, towards yeah. the end, and it's a, it's Tilk at his most badass, and it's like, well, that's the fight that I would have wanted to see between him and Apophis. Mm. Yeah, because that's what I kind of... It's what's frustrating me at the moment, because Tilk's just like this passive player. Tilk, do this. Tilk, do that. Be the muscle. Run this mission. But And, like, he used to be this awesome warrior, like, first prime of Apophis, like... Yeah. Just absolutely epic, just but we're not. Toilets. We don't see any. We don't see any mm. of it. It's well, frustrating. What was his entire purpose for this two-parter? Was like jamming crystals in little pedestals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was it. Well, what was exactly. his line at the end of the first episode? Indeed, we are trapped. It's like thanks, Tilk. Cheers for that. <laughs> yeah. <That's funny. laughs> good, good call, mate. Good. Did we? Did we ever get a resolution? I was. I kind of like the ending, and I kind of don't like the ending. Hate the ending. Like the, I this. like. Of the whole of the last stand, yeah, oh, with yeah. with uh, Elliot up against yeah. the tree and yeah. stuff like that. Like so convenient, yeah. they told us what might happen, and then it cuts to black. Yeah. I rewound it. I'm like, I've, I've on, obviously stop. missed something. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was funny you mentioned Terminator because I thought Elliot was a lot like Miles Bennett Dyson. Yeah, just holding that. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly get slower. It'd be so much funnier if I remembered Terminator. <laughs> 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 Sounds like you're having a baby. Yeah. You treat yourself. Mate. Yeah, it did sound. Like um, <laughs> But yes, yeah, so I, like, I really liked the actor. Like in that moment, I thought that was a really strong scene for him and, yeah, like, yeah. in terms of a performance. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like he. Well, someone raises the points. Like, okay, he's he's going to stay behind. He's going to let the toxin go and kill it. Like once they get back to the gate, and that's going to clear enough of a path for them to get through. But someone brings up the point: What if they search him before yeah. they get to the gate? Mm. And no one answers that question, yeah. and they all just have. Well, he he, he said, "I'll just let it off here." Yeah. basically. Yeah, but that's. But if, if, if they're ten meters down the road, yeah, then it's too far away from the gate too. Yeah. That was the point. Yeah, that was. And, a, yeah, so that was like they It's like, oh, that's as good as it's going to get, I guess. If yeah. they search it, like, yeah, it was just such a flimsy Kill plan. The and is the partner basically. still in orbit in a fucking hatak? Yeah, right. He's yeah. the one sending. He's yeah. the one sending down all the ships and the troops yeah. and that kind yeah. of stuff. And we don't know. Any, I'm sure they've discussed it away from the, the screen for the audience. But like, how long does that gas stick around for? Yeah, how deadly is it? Like, if they said one thing, if it's done within the ship with Daniel. They know that the pressure and blah, 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 you're in mm. that confined space or in that room, it's going to kill everyone. Out in the open, you, you, you're dependent on winds or is it just like penetrate like every you know air yeah. cell around? Well, given yeah. that they stick said- around for an hour, a day, a week. Like Tilk's obviously just sitting there going, all right, we're good, Tilk. He goes, no, you can send someone else in first. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah. oh, die <laughs> Well, that's it. How do they test it? Because it's yeah. like Renal says at the start, oh, there's enough in that little vial to kill everyone in this base like four, over, four times over yeah. or something. Why do you need that much? <laughs> well, and how Just far? Kill them twice. How far does that dissipate? And then how do they know? Yeah. Like they've only got Tilk and Jacob, so it's like mm. at one point they had to send one of them in to well, find out to whether it'd... Tilk in first. You'd imagine because obviously Selmak's going to die, so Tilk would have at least a day mm. to get a new t- new yeah. far. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. That's what I would do. Off you go, mm. Tilk. <laughs> 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 go read the system lords like. <laughs> vending machine and you stick one of them in your belly yeah what I wanted to see at the end was actually the um, the search party come and grab him take him back and then at least yeah. him <laughs> releasing the <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna push this button right now no but yeah I wanted to see him at least push the button and then Everyone would be it. like, oh shit. It was like two yeah. episodes of pressing that button. It's like, I want to see what know, happens when yeah, the button's Push pressed. the goddamn button. <laughs> do you know why they couldn't do any of that? Because, and it, it's in the audio commentary and in, the, and in the book, Cooper, Cooper. He pushed his whole set piece. He designed the entire episode around that crash, the, the cargo ship crash. Oh my God. That was his oh. thing. That was his. He's like, I don't. Because he, he wanted to do that seatbelt joke. He put, yeah, basically. <laughs> I've got a really good joke. Uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it work, but I'm going to spend f-ing thousands doing it. He pulled rank. If you, anyone who's got the DVD, go and listen to it. He basically pulled rank and he said, This is what we're doing. I don't care how much it costs. <sighs> Summit can we can we can reuse shots from Summit and save budget for that. And they did this when Daniel what I want. the second time Daniel pulled out like the little vial. 
that was straight stock footage from the first time he pulled it out. Because <laughs> yeah. at least the totally. first time we saw him take it out, we saw like a wide shot of him like handling it. The second time we just saw a, like him standing there, close up of him taking it out, him standing there, close up yeah. of him putting it back in. I'm like, no, no, no. You've realised that after the fact. Yeah, that was yeah. probably. I wonder whether in. I wonder whether Shanks is like in that in that conversation of Selma going, I was just about to do it, and then this happened. I'm like, they went, I, no, you fucking weren't. Now we have to fix it in post, man. <laughs> <laughs> fix up some of the other shots. What I did like though about the ending, as convenient as it was, like this might happen, this might happen, and everything's gonna work out fine because we're at 42 minutes already. Was all done, the editors and Martin Wood, I'm sure, and Cooper had nothing to do with it. But the um, Jafar horn, I, I really liked how creepy that sounded. Yeah. Like, because it was like a one shot, it only went for like 15 or 20 seconds. But like, it, you know, you sort of saw Elliot there on the ground, you were behind him, and then you saw SG1 just sort of walk past and pat him on the shoulder, going, Good on you, buddy, thanks for living. And they all walk <laughs> off, and then you just slowly, you know, you pan around and slowly zoom in on Elliot as you hear this faint horn. And then slowly, just the crunching of footsteps as Jafar walking mm. next to him. And then just before it closes to, to black again, it's the Jafar horn again. I'm like, that sounds fucking scary. Yeah, that part I like. Yeah, and you didn't see anything. Like you didn't see Jafar. You didn't see shadows or anything. Like it was just all. Yeah, give it. It's all in your head, really. It's very I really rare like that. for an episode to go out on a guest actor's face. Like yeah. his mm. face sold that. And apparently, yeah, Cooper and Wood had to fight for that. There are a lot of the other like higher ups. Like, no, no, we want to see. Soldiers actually approach. We want to see, you know, see an army of Japan. Yeah, I do like, too. No, like, no, no, we, we want to play <laughs> no, that no. on the face. No, we blew the budget because Cooper. Right? <laughs> I reckon that's what it was. Tell it's you like- what was a bloody good shot, though, when, when those, when um, bloody O'Neill, Tilk, and old mate Tokra went over to that mound and looked over at all the oh, gold. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. shit. I didn't think that the old cash were that shot. big, though, because I swear you see those from a long distance, you see a Hatak. And the and the Jafar are the same they, size. They went El Kesh, where they went. They yeah. um went they troop ships. Oh, uh, is that are they yeah? Different? They're like taller and skinnier and stuff. That's what I, I thought, thought. I thought they were the El Kesh that were bombing. Yeah, maybe. Oh no, no yeah. The the shot reached source about yeah over, over the cliff. I thought there was a couple of um big troop ships there. Right. Yeah. There might have been. Some they looked like in the El Kesh. Background. There were there were big ships. Because that, yeah, that, no, that, that shot they end up using in like the opening credits. Like that becomes yeah. like a big, oh, no, yeah, a big money right. shot for. Because uh, the other shot was. Uh, the big uh, mothership in space where they all all the system lords met, and the, the background was just like the the star mm. or like the I don't know what they were. They looked like um, novas or whatever. Oh, the nebulas. Nebulas. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that just that one shot, and they held it on there for ages. I'm like, that is awesome. Mm. <laughs> it looked it looked so good. Press pause. <laughs> <laughs> Need a couple more seconds. Press pause. You got to whack it. I noticed, in, especially in the last stand, Carter was helping Elliot a lot, like walking. Even when Tilt came and helped in the next shot, Carter was carrying Elliot. Mm. Uh, obviously, because she cared about him. I don't know. I wasn't feeling that vibe from her. Obviously, I never have with anyone with Carter. If she has feelings for someone, I just do not get that. Yeah. Well, in the auto commentary, they made fun of it because apparently Richard Innocent and Chris Judge, because they're the big guys, they just get sick of carrying people. So yeah, right. <laughs> they, they didn't want to actually carry the actor. They were just like, nah. So they're like, okay, well, just Carter can carry him. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, dude, just use your legs a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> like, hang quality. your head if you have to. Yeah. <laughs> and he did half the, half the time he delivered his lines and he was looking down away what, from that? the camera. That's the troop carrier. I just felt sorry for Elliot a lot considering like whenever he's laying down, they're, talk- they're like, he is near death. He will die if he... M- Don't even speak. Okay, like Sel- <laughs> uh, Lantash had to sort of take a back seat. He goes, I'm going to put all my energy into just fixing this body. Yeah. And Elliot there, who is like speaking for the both of them. But even then, it's like, don't even talk if you don't have to. You you cannot move. You will die. Yeah. Next shot, he's like walking with his yeah, arm right. around someone from SG1. <laughs> and then they put him down to like do something else. And they're like, oh my God, he's nearly dead. Stop moving. Yeah. Don't even talk. You're exerting yourself. Next one, he's walking and hobbling along. I'm like, and it's like pick okay, him mind. up for fuck's sake. Someone. <laughs> Back in uh, Tokra, Tokra Part 2, it's like, one of the main plot points is they couldn't move Jacob because yeah. he'd just been blended. Yeah. Yeah, and it's right. like, no, to repair all the cancer and stuff like that, cannot be moved. Has to lie there on that bed the whole mm, time. Yeah. And well, stayed yeah. there the whole time. that's why that Jacob bed. survived. You did see a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out movement is good for them. <laughs> yeah. You did see that, a little bit of RDA disdain when they you know, fashioned a stretcher. And yeah. then they're walking through, and they then sharpen the edges of those sticks. Yeah, too. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. must have taken ages, just in case they need to do use it and as a weapon. And then he just he let out this little like, oh, 
uh, and Carter's like, put him down, oh my god, he's in pain. <laughs> and then they put him down, and I swear to God, Richard Dennis had just like exactly. two inches above the ground, just dropped him and got <laughs> up like, I don't give a f- I got bad he knees. Never looked back. I'm not bending down. <laughs> Rewatch it. He didn't give a shit about that secondary <laughs> actor. And if you go back and watch that scene too, I, I don't the know. Third, the third take, he's just dropped it from standing yeah. high. <laughs> Did we get the shot? Let's go. He's like, my, knee, my knee's playing up. I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> One take. But in the, in part of that sequence as well, I feel like math might not be uh, Cooper's strong point either. Where are they? Four of them. 25 miles from the gate. He's just due north, south, east and west. I figure we're three miles from the gate. Give or take. 25 miles from the gate. Yeah. 22 to the next bit. We've got a glider's patrol in the area. I figure we got 20, 25 miles to go in that direction. With this terrain, I figure we can make a mile every 15 minutes. That should hopefully put us at the sensors in under nine hours. <laughs> what? Okay, okay, so they've got 25 miles to go. Yeah. She says minutes. we can do four miles an hour. Over nine hours is 36 miles. <laughs> and they've only got to travel 25. Well, she's accommodated for all the times they're going to drop him. Well, yeah, yeah. that's the only thing you're going to think of. It's like, it's like, okay, so every, can we leave this guy? Every, <laughs> Seriously. Every hour we're going to do three miles and then take a 15-minute break. Yeah, and yeah. then do three miles and take a 15-minute break. But another two miles have a crisis of conscience because we're going to think about leaving him. No, we're going to pick him up again. But I... I, w- I picked up on this, the pep talk that Carter was giving Elliot. It's like, we go through the gate, we get in trouble. Get out of trouble and yeah. then we leave. And he's like, "Tell that to Major Mansfield." And I just picture Carter going, "He's not SG one, <laughs> 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 bitch. He's SG seventeen. <laughs> May as well be SG eleven." Barely bench. I would have had, a, would have had a go at him for being a smartass. Like, yeah, wake up to yourself. Like, you didn't even know him. This is your first mission, bro. <laughs> like, Major Mansfield, shit, mate. Everyone knows it. <laughs> Why do you think he's seventeen? Like, look how old he is. Yeah, and he's SG seventeen. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't shut up, you will be too. Yeah, not only is he S seventeen, it's like his members are fresh out of the academy. Yeah, like that's right. His newest yeah. member doing total fresh out of the academy. Mansfield died because of you, <laughs> <laughs> not because of me. Yeah. Oh uh, shit! You had to leave his archaeologist at home. He's way better. <laughs> um, <laughs> when um, they're about to crash, Jacob goes, "Hold on, Danny." Yeah, oh, no. oh, did he? he called him Danny like three times. Oh yeah. wow, I didn't notice that. Yeah. And I was watching it like I guess like Reese on subtitles. subtitles, so I saw it coming, and I'm like, no, Danny. Whoever's written these subtitles is full of shit. Because wow. when he said it, he did say it earlier, but I, it, the subtitles said Daniel. So when he said Danny, I, I was like, no, he sounded like Danny, but it couldn't have been Danny. <laughs> and then he said Danny at the end. I'm like, How and it said weird. Danny on the subtitles. I'm like, what? Yeah, like, I don't think he called him Daniel, like face to face. At all, really? I feel like Danny. Daniel Jackson would have a massive problem with that. Oh, oh, he I does. Don't call me. With that. Don't does, call mate. me Danny. Call me Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Shanks has a huge problem. I don't think. He, I don't think he calls him <laughs> that ever right, again to, from memory. But if no. I didn't even pick it up in this episode, God knows what he's been calling him yeah. for the rest of the series. Mm. Then hey, big schlong, get over here! <laughs> wow, <laughs> I my my, hey, look, get my favorite thing with Jacob was, and the only he only wore it for a fraction of a second, but was that silly little hat. That little that little oh, hat that yeah. he had with the little fake little ponytail oh, on the top of it. Oh, and he was dressed up. The Lord yeah. U thing. Yeah. He kept the robe on, but geez, he got rid of that hat quick. He must have realised how stupid it looked. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I was living for it. The only other thing I wanted, I had was um, how we easily give the Tokra our tech, and we always have. But all Carter wants from the Tokra is is Martouf's test, result. test results. And they're like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No yeah. freaking way. I know you want that, and yeah. it probably wouldn't do me any harm, but Yeah, you have to no. go through the High Council. Oh, look, Hardy, you're probably not smart enough to read them. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone we'll loves just... a dumb blonde. Oh, look, we won't. We'll tell your dad, and if he thinks it's good enough, yeah. so pass it along. <laughs> dad said, showed me. Oh, you got me there. Oh, damn. All right, here you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird, given that she's, the, so one that, she's the one that zatted him. <laughs> yeah. Twice. Double zat. Mm-hmm. Double tapped. Yeah, so how would he? How would either of them survive at all? That was something that I brought up in the episode. I was like, yeah. I kind of hinted at it because I knew that it was coming in this episode. But yeah, it's like, well, mm. how? Which kind of makes it even worse if they'd actually done the episode the way they initially planned, and Jr. Born as Martuf was going to come back. It's like, how do they write around the fact that she's added him twice? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, it's like, mm. yeah, it's kind of believable with the 
school, I guess. He could have dislodged himself after the... <laughs> <laughs> but in it's like, the, I'm not in going down that, with you. We're, we're these benevolent toker, but I ain't yeah. dying for you, mate. <laughs> in saying that, um, how would they know... That, like, Martus clearly the Zaytark, because it's his brain. Mm. So, wouldn't Selmak know that Martus is the Zaytark? Mm. Or at the very least... Yeah, have an independent thought. I don't know. It's mm. weird. Selmac. Sorry, Lantash. Oh, Lantash. Yeah, that was one thing that I always was confused about as well. It's like, was Lantash, was he Zaytark as well? Yeah, it doesn't make much sense. Mm. Mm. And wouldn't he be able to overtake the brain then and stop it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. If it's supposed to be, you know, like yeah. one Individual. gives out to the other. Yeah. Or at yeah. least be like, oh shit, this guy's gone rogue and jump out. Someone else. <laughs> it's gonna blow. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Yeah, the last right. thing I want here is I love Osiris. She, to me, she's on Apophis level in terms of delivery. Like yeah. the way that Apophis could deliver these super over the top arch lines, and you totally bought it. Mm-hmm. I think Sarah's the same. She can deliver these over the top lines, mm. and you. F- buy it every time like that's what I love about Sarah she's not mm. as intimidating as Apophis no. but just the way she can deliver these lines and I'm I'm all yeah. about it yeah I like that about Zaparkna as well the very that whole scene at the very start was so arch mm. yeah for those two nailed it because it has to be hard talking with a flange because you've got to be really articulate because it is difficult to hear it yeah yeah I do notice that some some go old it's like they just sound all mumbly yeah. because they're not they're not articulate it seems to be Anyone with a with a non American accent tends to sort of sound better. Like you know, yeah, um, yeah that's true. Annalise Plowman, Sarah is um, she's a New Zealander. Then you've got oh, yeah. Baal with his South African accent, yeah. and um, yeah, I just I just think that kind of stuff sounds really cool. And what I like too is that usually when we see two flange voices talking to one another, there's like a human. Or another race somewhere in the room, and mm. it's almost like they're putting yeah. on a show for other people. So when they are very theatrical in their in their body language uh, and the way that they pronounce certain words, it's it almost feels like it's for other people, even though we know the ghoul to like that. But with that scene, mm. Osiris the partner just like trying to yeah. outflange each other, <laughs> and <laughs> well, I'm like, I, I buy it. I didn't I didn't look at that scene going, Jesus yeah. is over the top. I'm like, no. God, the ghoul. To well, given dicks. that we find out in later seasons, they don't have to talk like that. No, no, they no, choose no. to talk like yeah. that. Well, it's yeah. always, I felt well, when I first heard Baal, and I'm like. Have you always spoke like this? Because I feel like I, I I know your normal voice so much, but mm. I'm like, is it just from watching like cons and interviews and stuff? And yeah. I just I, I love him because I love the character. But yeah, you're right. They just they don't have to. They're just yeah. full of themselves. Well, and and then someone online also brought up the fact that it's like, well, they send Daniel there because he he's fluent in Gua'uld, mm. but during the entire summit they speak English, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like right. through the whole thing. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. well, you know. Totes. All right. It's time to find out if Reese has been paying attention. Here we go. Five questions. Hot off the press. (laughs) (laughs) Chris, you just wrote. Straight off your desk. (laughs) So these have come across my desk and I just thought I'll share them with the listeners. 30 seconds on the clock (laughs) for you, Reese, checking if you've been paying Paying attention. So your time starts. For the record, when this segment starts, I don't pay attention. So I'm just going to be over here eating some chips. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> good to know we got that on record. They're not the winners. Uh, They're not the winners. Just drop his mic there. <laughs> <laughs> Great right, people who ever made Absolute. those chips. Smith's Crips. Smith's Crips. Crips. Um, <laughs> Smith's Crips. Crips. You can get Crips Smith's and... Bloods as well if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like them. Get my Crips. Great people. If you want to sponsor onions, the show, Absolutely. jump on board. Get, get into, into gate, gate at gmail.com. Yeah, at you can get on Patreon. Jump on forward slash Twitter get into and gate. You posted on Instagram. Twitter as well, let us know. After Christmas the other week. And it was just like you talking, you know, it's Boxing Day or you know, it's post Christmas when you're building Lego hungover. Yeah. <laughs> and so you hashtag Lego, hashtag Jim Beam, hashtag great people. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like if you get it, you get it. Yeah. Again, you know. <laughs> like your mum's following you on Instagram yeah. going, what the yeah. f is he talking about? <laughs> if you don't great get people. it, you can get f. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, time starts after this question. Oh, good. In the episode Summit and the Last Stand, mm. what powerful Gua'uld rejoined the System Lords? Uh, well, Anubis, but he didn't Correct. rejoin yet. But yeah. Who died at the end of Last Stand? Uh, Elliot. Correct. 
How long had Anubis been away for? 2,000 years. Uh, no. Thousands of Who years. Who was the system lord with the goatee? Baal. Correct. What is the name of the Asian system lord? You. Who? You, me. Me. Not you. How long was he away for? Quick. Thousands of years. Ooh. Thousand years. I think time eluded you there. <laughs> I a said thousand, a thousand years. <laughs> it was your third guess. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I didn't have to go back to uh, it. I knew it was one or two thousand. You stupid son of a bitch. What were the first two answers? Because you just man. like, bang, you're like, what was, uh, you're like Anubis, Anubis, Elliot, two thousand years, uh, oh, uh, thousands of years. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh God, I you're really so want to give that to you so bad. You know when you said two thousand years with such confidence, I had a thousand written here and I'm like, maybe it? it was two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was hovering over the correct yeah. going, uh, I Wait, think he's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also, your first question was ridiculous. Why? He didn't rejoin the he system did. lords yet. He, he did. did. Remember, no, they, remember he said, they all voted and they then voted. you was he's the in. only one Yeah, but the vote? deal was before he rejoined them, he has to go and destroy Earth. That was the deal. Ooh. Controversy. Jeez, I actually <laughs> missed that. <laughs> I think it's controversy. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, why did you vote, me, vote him all back in? So suck a dick. He's in, mate. He's in like Flint. <laughs> my favourite like Believe movie. me, I've seen the rest of the series. He's f***ing in. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Sorry, you're yeah. wrong. <laughs> of course I am. I actually think you might be right, I didn't. Uh, I am right, because that, that was pretty the deal. Sure that sounds right. Because that was well, the only way to get around the deal with the Asgard, or the treaty with the Asgard, is so that he blew up Earth before he became mm. a system lord. So s- suck it. No. I so it looks like your father made you wrong. <laughs> now let's ask Robert C. Cooper, shall we? Good point. Well, it was a thousand years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is episode 105 of Get Into Gage. Happy New Year. Welcoming in the new year. Happy bigger and better. New Year. Congratulations. 2019. Yeah, congratulations yeah, to ourselves. Congratulations. This is our fourth calendar year, I guess, that we've been... Yeah. Uh, Jesus, yes, right? is it? Wow. We started in yeah, 16, 17, 18, now 19. So we've been doing it two and a half years, but we'll claim it's, you know, it's yeah, four calendar sure, or whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Was it 16? Yeah, yeah. We will be back next week for episode 106 to talk failsafe. Any hint in the title there, Reese? Uh, look, I think they tried to be safe and it just failed. Oh, good, good, good. Absolutely. Incorrect, though, but we'll find out why next week <laughs> we talk about that episode. Uh, until then, you can check us out. Uh, all of our old podcasts, if you are new to the show, just uh, hit up uh, your favourite podcast outlet. Uh, search Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast. Hit us up on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get involved and uh, follow the show, comment, subscribe, all that sort of gear. And uh, also, if you want to drop us a long-form chat, a, uh, an email, as it were, getintogate at gmail.com. And if you want to do Summit real good, <laughs> I was gonna say, um, when we on Patreon, sometimes we all get together and have a summit. So come along to it. Yeah, if you want but, to reach I the mean, summit, summit if you want to reach to the summit of fandom, yeah, good call. Yeah, that's that's, good it's that's not a, your last stand. Yeah, it will not it. be your last stand if <laughs> you go to Patreon. <laughs> Terrible. Hey, look, yeah, right. All of it. All of that yeah. it was terrible. Cut around that, Mitch. Yeah, that's all right. Make that it better. Uh, and a few people, d- despite all that, a few people have actually done that. So we do want to welcome. They've a climbed couple. the summit. They've climbed no, the, yeah, yeah. the summit. Yeah. I thought this is the last stand. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'll tell you what. If the Gibson Brothers did. podcast goes public, it'll be uh, it'll be our last stand. Yeah, oh, definitely. Going to jail. Uh, so <laughs> I did want to welcome a couple of new uh, patrons uh, to our Patreon uh, little family. We've got uh, Jake, just goes by Jake, no last name. Oh, I like it. So it's cool. cleaner. Jake the Snake. We Jake, got Jake. Uh, Kevin. Kevin and Devin are the other two. Kevin O'Donoghue and uh, Devin Dove. Moore. Uh, so welcome, boys, and uh, welcome, Kevin Dev. Kevin Dev? I mean, they, they're separate people. Separate people, but... Right. So, they... Kev, welcome, mate. Yeah. Dev. And uh, he, you know who else is welcome? Dev. Dev. Bloody welcome, mate. Welcome, Dev. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kevin actually has already come through and just sent us through a quick little uh, a quick little message uh, the same time that he joined our Patreon. So I just thought I'd share that with us. Well, we've got a spare minute. He says, uh, I love Stargate and love your podcast. The worst part is trying not to laugh out loud while I'm listening to ye, Y-E, at work. Mate. Um, he obviously yeah. meant yes. Well, no, he didn't. Just let me finish. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. He's I'm, hap- I'm happy Old to become English. a patron if it means this podcast, <laughs> unlike SGU, doesn't end. Also, Matty, <laughs> as someone who was born and bred in Ireland, your Irish accent makes me laugh every time. See, that's why he was saying yeah. 
You said, I love you. I love, I love you. He probably this. wanted you to do the whole thing. I love why, listening no. to you at work. Is this why you wanted to read it out? Yes. <laughs> Because he's from a, Ireland. It's not even mailbag. Uh, he's got a supporter. He's uh, can you do it? Keep up the good work, fellas, and maybe we might have a beer together someday. Feel a deep well, potato. Well, absolutely. So, yeah. welcome, Get Kev. Some Guinness up here. Can you do a South African effort, accent? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've got to park my hot talk in the car park. Oh, I like my Jafar. No, I can't. Jamaican. I can't do it. I'm a Jamaican. Jamaican the crazy. South African. Jamaican the crazy. What's uh? What do what Jamaicans like to eat? Bacon sandwich. That's the only one I can do. Say bacon. Bacon sandwich. And that's how you get a Jamaican accent. Bacon sandwich. Bacon sandwich. Jesus. Killed it. <laughs> oh, look like at me. I am like a Jamaican trying to do an Australian accent. Bacon sandwich. Coupa. <laughs> well, you're right, fool. <laughs> get into geek.